Okay, so uh, good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Principal Osorio. For those who do not know me, but most of you do, we may have some new families who are joining us this evening or joining our school. And I want to welcome everyone. Um, hopefully, all of you have had a wonderful summer up until this point. And my sincere wish and hope is that you and your family have been well, have been healthy, and have been able to have some um, meaningful time together. Uh, are this summer. Um, with us this evening is uh, Assistant Principal Ms. Lasser and also special guest we have our nurse coordinator uh, Maggie Rassiopo. You can just go like this so we can see you. <laughs> and uh, she's going to assist us. There's a couple of questions that were very specifically related to health concerns and I thought it would be best um, if she answered those particular questions. So we have the most accurate information. So just to get started, um, just want to share a few details with all of you. And I, I know you've heard a lot of this information already from Dr. Ricca, but now it's my chance to also share with you um, that the first day of school is um, September 10th. Okay, so that has been changed. The first day of school is September 10th. Um, the other thing you need to know is that we are starting our school year fully remote. So from September 10th until September 21st, we will begin school fully remote. So children will not actually be coming to the school yet. Okay, that's going to allow us some time to better prepare for uh, hybrid learning. Should we begin hybrid learning on the 21st? So with that, I want to just segue into the two models, there's actually three models, right? So if we were not dealing with COVID, all of us would be returning on the first day of school as if nothing had ever happened, as nothing more that, that we want than for all of the children to return to school. But since we are still dealing with um, COVID-19, um, the other two options are that your child can participate in his or her learning in a hybrid model, or you can choose what's called a full remote learning, okay? So in a hybrid model, um, you should have received a letter with your child's class placement, meaning your child's teacher, and the days that your child is scheduled to come to school when we begin in the hybrid model, okay? Your child would be assigned to come to school for two days in the week, Monday and Tuesday, or Thursday and Friday, okay? So I just wanted you to understand that model. There are some children who will come to school every day. And those children are um, children who are, have special needs who are in our special class in a very small class setting. And um, those parents, those children know who they are. So they would come to school every day. Um, some of our students who have what's called an individualized education plan, those children will come to school three days. So they either come to school Monday and Tuesday, and Wednesday's a half day for them, or they come to school Thursday and Friday, and Wednesday's still a half day for them, okay? So that's a, a special group of children, and those parents and those children know who they are. But the large majority of children will come to school either Monday and Tuesday, or they will come to school on Thursday and Friday. So that's the hybrid model. When your child is in school, approximately half of your child's class will be present, okay? And so if there's approximately 20 children in the class, then approximately 10 children will be present in the classroom, while the other 10 children are at home learning remotely that day until it is their turn to come to school to have uh, instruction in the classroom while the other half is at home learning virtually, okay? So I just wanted to explain what that hybrid model is. And now for full remote. So children, uh, there are some parents who have elected at the time that they would like for their child to participate in school completely from home, okay? And that's called the full remote option. And um, those parents, anyone who's interested in that, you have to write a letter to me or uh, an email or a fax 
and address that to me with your wishes for your child to participate completely virtually. And that would be for the marking period. And the first marking period runs through December 4th, okay? Now, if you decide um, that you're ready for your child to come back to school for the second marking period, terrific. Then you just let us know and your child participates for the second marking period. Now, there were some questions related to um, hybrid. So let's say that you chose um, that you wanted your child to start school in the hybrid model. And you know, let's say September 21st, we start hybrid and then it's October 1st and you're not feeling comfortable. You can elect if you want to be fully remote. Um, you know, we know that things can happen, your mind can change, and we are certainly going to be flexible with that. So I just wanted to be sure that I answered that particular question. Same is true that if you choose full remote, um, we ask that you make the commitment and stick it through to the first marking. Um, but if you absolutely cannot, because some circumstance has changed, then your child would just come in. So when you're asking, um, there are some parents who, who want to ask and say, oh, can my child, can I change days? Can I come? I'm assigned Monday, Tuesday, but I want to come Thursday, Friday. It's all been very carefully calculated. And it's for this exact reason. Or if your kiddos are out and you change your mind, now they just come. They just come on the day and time that they are assigned. Okay? Sorry, there's something here on the screen. So that is... I just wanted to make sure that you understood what the hybrid or remote model was, and then I'll go through and answer more questions related to that. Um, I think while Nurse Maggie is here, I'm just going to shift to the particular questions that are related to health because uh, Nurse Maggie has lots of places she needs to be, <laughs> and if she can answer our questions specifically related to the health concerns, then I can move on with the rest of the presentation. So Nurse Maggie, here are the two questions, okay? So the question is, what measures will be put in place to differentiate a student being sick with COVID-19 and a child having a more run-of-the-mill illness like a cold or a 24-hour virus, particularly if the, the common illness symptoms overlap with COVID, like a cough or fever. What, how are we going to differentiate between that? That's a great question, because a lot of the symptoms of COVID are very um, co common, right? A cold, a runny nose, a fever, and we're really not going to know from when the time that the child comes into the nursing office. We're going to ask the parent to pick the child up take the child to the doctor and have the doctor evaluate that child. Um, the doctor's gonna look in their ears, their throat, make an, and make an evaluation whether, whether the child needs a COVID test or not. The biggest, most important thing that we have to do as a school is that the nurses have to follow up with the parents to see if the parent took the child to the doctor and what the, child's, what the doctor said about the child. Um, if the child gets a COVID test, then you know, we're a little more con concerned you know, if the doctor felt that the child needed a test like that. Um, so we're gonna follow up with the pa parent to see if that child turns to, to be pop positive. If that's the case, then we're gonna start to close the classroom down and quarantine the people that are, that are inside that classroom within that co cohort. Um, the biggest important thing is for everybody to communicate back and forth. Certainly, I'm going to have the, the nurses calling anybody that basically set, goes home sick. We're also going to communicate with the parents. Um, if the child goes home ill from a classroom, we're going to send them a notice. The child in Mrs. Smith class went home with vomiting or went home with fe fever. That way, that pa parent has a heads up that a child in, in their child's class went home ill. So right. it's all going to be about transparency and communication with each other so that we can try to make sure that we catch things early. Right. 
And then another question was, will a child automatically have to be tested for COVID? And if a parent decides not to have their child tested, will the child be required to stay out of school for two weeks, regardless of when symptoms dissipate, just to be sure? Okay, so if they go to the doctor and the doctor sees that the child is sick with something else and the doctor gives us a note saying the child had strep, an ear infection, what, whatever the doctor felt. But if the doctor felt that the child needed to be te tested and the parent just did not want to test the child, then the child has to stay home for 10 days from the time that the symptoms first be began. They also have to be fever free for 72 hours. Um, you know, without the, the use of, of medication, and they have to be symptom improved, meaning if they had a, a rash or they had a bad cough, that their symptoms have to be much improved prior to coming back to school. So 10, 10 days, fever free for three days without the use of medication and symptom improved. Thank you, Nurse Maggie. You're welcome. And if a child is out sick, basically, if, if let's just make sure we're saying the right things here. If a child goes home sick or the parent elects to keep their child home because they feel that their child is sick, in order for their child to return, they need to come back with a doctor's note clearing them. Yes? Correct. Yes. Even if they're out with like a sore throat, we need the doctor yeah. to clear them. Correct? Right. Well, we really want the doctor to evaluate them because if they have strep, then they don't need to be out for 10 days, right? They, they can get the antibiotic, they can be fever free for 24 hours, and they can come back to, to school. That's the, a regular childhood d d disease. But if the doctor feels that the child has COVID, then the child has to re remain home. Or if the child is tested, the this is very important. They cannot come back to, to school until they get that re result back. If right. it's ne negative, the they come back. That's the question that's in the chat here. So yeah, sometimes the results can take seven to 10 days. So if your child was tested for COVID, your child would have to stay out until the COVID test comes back, right? And if the, if the test is back negative, then they can return to school. Absolutely. Okay, so hopefully that was clear. Those were the only questions that I received that were related specifically to COVID-19 in terms of, you know, if your child is sick. If anyone has a last question while Nurse Maggie is on, um, if you can put it in the chat right now, we'll just give you a moment to do that. Um, then we can let her go on to her other meetings that she may have this evening. Um, and this is a related question that I'm going to answer um, while we give a our parents a chance to respond here. So, you know, if a child was out with a runny nose or a slight sore throat and um, they stayed home from school, they were absent that day. The question here is if your child is, stays home because of their runny nose or sore throat or what have you, can they still participate remotely that day? And I say, yes, your child should participate if they are feeling well enough to participate. Um, so if the kiddo is sick and you know, when our kids get sick, sometimes they need to just rest so that they, their body can recover, certainly allow them to do that. And if they don't participate, when they return to school, you, you have the note, the doctor's note for them to come back. But if they're feeling up to it, they should certainly participate. And so Nurse Maggie, I do see a couple of questions here. Um, so one question here is saying, so if a child stays home with only a runny nose, does he or she need a doctor's note? Well, if they stay home with a runny nose and they're better, their symptom better, they never had a fe fever, it was just that little runny nose and they didn't get worse, they're fine, you're fine, everybody's fine, then I, I think that if they have a history of that, it's fine. However, we really are going to want you to take that child to, to the doctor because a lot of times COVID starts with a runny nose. You know, it starts with a runny nose and two days later, you have a slight fever. Five days later, you get worse. So I really don't want a child to come back even with a runny nose because that really sometimes is a, a symptom of COVID. 
I prefer for you to just take them to the doctor, get that child cleared, and make sure that you're not sending them. Uh-oh. Everybody froze. I hope that's not mine. To, to school. And if a teacher becomes positive, <laughs> oh, are they frozen? No, uh, I'm, I think if, it's, go ahead, go ahead. If a teacher is pop positive, it's the same thing. We're gonna shut that classroom down. We're gonna call all the parents. I'm gonna call everybody via phone. So I really need your cell phones and your e emails to be updated. That's the most important thing because I'm gonna call you on your cell phone. If I cannot reach you on your cell phone, I'm gonna call you on your house phone. If I cannot reach you on your house phone, I'm gonna email you. We're gonna find you so that we can try to chat and make sure that you know that somebody was pop positive in the classroom and so that we can quarantine as quickly as po possible. Of course, anytime that we have a pop positive case, we're gonna call the Department of Health we're gonna call all my contact tra tracers, I have about 10 of them, and we're gonna start making phone calls because we wanna immediately get everybody to know who needs to stay home and who does not. That classroom has to be shut down, it has to be disinfected, and we're gonna contact trace to see if there's anybody else within the building that was infected or possibly affected, you know. Yes. Um, so it's a, it's a pro process. And does the child, more children need to be tested for COVID or the antibodies before they start the hybrid model? No, uh, honestly, um, we do not have a rapid test that is an accurate rap rapid test. And the test that's the most accurate is that P PCR test. Mm -hmm. And that usually takes two to six days to actually get a, a result back. So let's say that you take the COVID test, then you take your kid to Target, then you go to a restaurant, then maybe they played with their friends. By the time that you get that negative test back, your child must have, might, might have been exposed somewhere else. So we can't really guarantee that, that the child is pop positive. So it makes no sense until we get a good rapid, rapid test to actually test everybody. Yeah, so I think that the big takeaway um, from this, this part of our meeting is that um, if your child is displaying any kind of cold-like symptoms, they really need to stay home. And, um, you know, your child can participate in school from home until they are feeling better. I think that is the big takeaway. We just, we all as a community have to do our part to keep each other healthy and safe. Okay, so I think that's the big takeaway from this. And if your child has any of these kind of cold-like symptoms, in order to return to school, they do need a doctor's note. Very different than from falling and scraping your knee and they stay home or they get a bump. No, that's very different. But anything that has any of the symptoms, which we know, cold-like symptoms, uh, mirror or are very similar to COVID-19, your child needs to see uh, a doctor be uh, before return. And if the, child, if the doctor requires a test, then your child should be tested and stay home until we have the results of that test. Correct, Nurse Maggie? Okay. Yep. So I have a sibling. I just want to go over a sibling because a lot, there's a lot of confusion with a si sibling. If a sibling is sick and they're going to be tested for COVID, then you should keep your other you know, ch children home. However, if the sibling is sick and he has a cold and the doctor says it's just a cold, you know, we don't need to test, then your kids can continue to go to school. Yeah, um, okay. So it's really a matter of what's going on and it's very sit situational. Yes, thank you so much for that. So we're gonna shift away, I think, from talking about um, specifically about if your child was to get sick in school um, to some other things that have to do with the hybrid model and remote learning. There's another question here. Do I need to keep asymptomatic sibling home? Yeah. So this I think you question. just address this. Like if the if if this if one child at home was tested for COVID, then the other child, the sibling should stay home, correct? Until the test result comes back. Right? Yep. So I, th I think we've answered everything uh, for now related to um, 
specifically COVID-19, okay? So Nurse Maggie, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate having the expert, our district expert in the house with us. So we appreciate your time. Thank you. Have a great night, guys. Okay. Bye. Um, so, and, and those of you who have been around with us for a while know that Nurse Maggie was part of our post rural community. We were so lucky to have her for a number of years before she elevated to uh, nurse coordinator for the district. Um, so I did want to shift and then continue uh, meeting. I know there's a number of questions that are not related to what we just discussed. So I'm going to present and then if anything um, is not covered, we'll go back into the questions to answer. So just give, give me a chance to get through what I've prepared and then we'll address any other questions. Okay, so I talked about hybrid versus uh, full remote. There were a number of questions that were related to the full remote model, so or even in the hybrid model in terms of instruction. So what I want to share is that when your children are home learning, whether they're a hybrid, that they come in a couple of days, or if they're doing full virtual, your child will always be connected to the teacher they are assigned to. Okay, um, it's it's. That is a question that we continue to get is, will there be some other teacher that's teaching my child? No. That is your child's assignment for the year. That is the teacher, okay? Um, and in terms of what you can expect to experience in terms of instruction, like how much of my child's day will be synchronous? You'll hear that a lot. Synchronous are live experiences. Like what we're doing right now is a synchronous experience. So what you can count on is that your child's teacher will have three opportunities, and K to three most especially, for your child to participate synchronously, okay, when they're home. Synchronously means that they are going to have, the three experiences are they will have what's called a morning meeting. Morning meeting is going to start their day. Every child at Post Road and every other school in our district will have to log in for their morning meeting. There is where the teacher will take attendance, okay? A little bit different from the springtime. Remember, springtime was a very different situation. We've learned a bit, and now we're going to have a school day. We're not, you know, starting our day at noon, going till six o'clock at night. It's a regular school day, okay? So the teacher will let you know the time of morning meeting, and that will vary by grade, but it'll be somewhere, it could be at 8.45, it could be at nine, it depends, but the teacher will let you know. That morning meeting is important because we need to build community. We have to connect with your child. We want your child to connect with the teacher and his classmates. Remember in the springtime, the teacher had the luxury of connecting with your child all year long. Right? They already had a relationship, and now we have to establish one. So it's really important that your child connects every morning for morning meeting. There will be, that's a social emotional experience that they will have, but it will also set the tone for learning. You know, the teacher may then say, and here's what you're going to be learning today, boys and girls. And for those of you who are home, you're going to log into your platform, which I'll talk about in a moment, and you will see this is what you're going to be doing for reading and writing today, and here's what you'll have for math. I'm just giving some examples. So the teacher will set the tone for what they're going to do while they're home. Um, so that's one opportunity, and it won't be very long. When we talk about these synchronous opportunities, it doesn't mean that your child is going to log on like we are right now, and that they're going to sit in front of a computer from nine in the morning until three o'clock in the afternoon. None of us would do that as adults, and we certainly would not do that with children. It's just not developmentally appropriate. We will certainly have them have a connection with their class. It will probably be about maybe two minutes. If a teacher wants to do a read aloud as well, it may go a little bit longer, but it'll be something brief where they are connecting with, the, with their community. Um, the second time they'll have an opportunity to synchronously engage will be for word work. So all of our kiddos in kindergarten through third grade have what's called foundations or word work. So they will certainly log in for that. And, and every class will be at a certain time. The teacher will provide a schedule for you. And then you'll know, oh, my child needs to log in 
and they'll tell you the link and everything. You'll have that information. We're not there yet, but I want to give you the concept. And then the third time will be for a closing meeting. So at the end of the day, we need to close out our day and do a check-in and say, you know, how did it go today? Um, you know, what was your best learning today? Or to, to get you ready for the next day's learning. So um, if you can imagine like these bookends, we're starting and ending our day and we're certainly having word of work. So those are three specific opportunities that you can count on your child connecting and engaging with their class and or their teacher, okay? Now, when you look at the instructional document that's posted on the website, there are other blocks of time there where they talk about, you know, ELA or a math time. There will be other times where your child may be asked to participate either in a small group or a one-to-one -one conference. There may, and that is also synchronous. It may not be every single day, um, just as when your child is in school, they don't go to small group every single day. The teacher rotates groups through based on children's needs, and that's based on their performance and um, you know, assessment and what they see your child is doing. They make some careful decisions about who they need to check in with. So there, may, there will be other opportunities, but it may not be every single day. But you will know, the teacher will tell you in advance, um, I need, I need for, for James to come in for uh, a one-to-one, -one. I wanna hear him reading, and I'm gonna have a book there and, and display it, and I need to hear him reading for whatever purpose. Or I'm gonna bring in Carlos because I wanna go over something that we, went, that we were doing in math, and I think he was having some trouble with it, I wanna reteach him and another student, okay? So, these, these are things that teachers do on a daily basis in the classroom that they're going to try their very hardest to replicate in this kind of format, okay? This is not easy to do. Even what I'm doing is not easy, <laughs> but, you know, um, I'm out there doing it and, and they will be as well. So, you know, we ask that you just have patience and, 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 and just be communicative because they, they want to do all the things that they normally do in their classroom and they're figuring out how do I do that in this, in this uh, virtual environment. And I can assure you, our teachers have been working so hard all summer and um, typically in the summer teachers do take some vacation time but they are also planning and learning on their own. And this summer is no different. Um, in fact, they have been taking a number of workshops um, to enhance their teaching so that they could be even better prepared for the fall. But I wanna share that with you because I want you to know how committed our staff is to teaching our, our Post Road Tigers, okay? So I wanted to share a little bit about, um, about that instruction. So when you see blocks of time that say that something is 45 to 60 minutes long, I want you to imagine that in a classroom, the teacher, for math doesn't stand up in front of the room and talk for 60 minutes or 50 minutes or 40 minutes. She gets up and she teaches a piece of that lesson, it may be about 10 minutes long, and then children go off and work independently, right? And that's part of that block of time that you're seeing in that plan. So part of it is what she's doing, the direct teaching, but then there's a whole chunk of it where they're working on their own or what used to be when they would work with a partner or in a group, okay? So, um, and if she calls the children in for a small group, that may be a synchronous component, but it's all built into that 60 minute block, okay? So when your child is not in a synchronous experience, there will be work posted, meaning that in their platform, which I'll talk about in a moment, there will be some assignments for them to do related to whatever subject it is at that time, okay? And more than likely, the teacher will either have a video that, uh, a brief video that they need to watch and have a task that they need to complete in, in the different subjects, okay? And then when they're in school, they'll have more of that live experience with their teacher. So, um, they're having a, a little bit of both worlds. So I just wanted to explain what that instruction is like. Um, and I think that I, that was one of the questions I was trying to expand upon, okay? And 
one more thing. Well, another question that was related to instruction also had to do with specials. So children uh, who are in school will go to their special. Okay, um, they, every, every child will have a special for a set amount of time. What is different this year is that our children will be in what's called a residency. So their special will be, um, let's say your child has art, they will always have art at the same time. They will always have their special at the same time every day as long as we are in a hybrid model, even in a full virtual model. It'll be at the same time every day. The difference here is that they are going to have one special for three weeks, and then they'll rotate and have another special for three weeks and, and engage in a residency, okay? So if your child is home, uh, there will be, if, you, if, if your child is hybrid and home or full virtual and home, there will be an assignment or an experience that is posted for them to engage in at that time. So let's say it's nine o'clock, then your child will go into the platform and do art, whatever's posted there for art. Um, and then when they're in school, they'll actually have the live experience in the classroom. Okay, so they will have um, specials every day. So it'll be different than how it was in the springtime. Okay, all right. I'm gonna make sure that I'm covering all bases here. Thank you for just being so patient as I work through all the questions. There was a question that was specifically about instrumental program. Okay, so some of you are um, fourth graders and fifth graders. We will have be my cat in the background. I'm so sorry that he decided to scream right now. <laughs> um, so the instrumental program, I, I actually have a meeting tomorrow where we're going to hear more detail about it. But what I, what I will share with you is for our fourth grade parents, we have approximately 400 or so fourth graders in the district and, or 500 perhaps, and only about 100 of those parents, the parents of those children, filled out the paperwork they were supposed to submit a couple of months ago. So yeah, we still have to deal with that. <laughs> There's a, we're going to be reissuing that paperwork where you were supposed to select an instrument. I'll put some choices. So the teachers are going to engage the children in that process, but we will have an instrumental program. It will not look like what it's looked like in the past, as far as I know, because of COVID. Um, probably a number of the lessons will be virtual. So our current fifth graders, they had a number of virtual lessons in the spring. So it may be similar to that but I dare to say it, it will probably be improved because we've learned so much since the spring. So stay tuned for more information about um, the instrumental program. It is happening, but I will have more detail. Unfortunately, my meeting is scheduled tomorrow with the coordinator, okay? But we will get more information to you about that. There were a number of questions related to supplies. Um, so uh, traditionally, our PTA uh, sponsors a fundraiser where you can purchase supplies in advance. Um, you purchase them online and those supplies are delivered to the school. So um, those of you who ordered those supplies, they will be arriving very soon if they haven't already. And then we are going to prepare um, to make sure that you're, that you're able to, we'll send them home with your child or that you can pick them up. So we're working on that. So what happened is that there was a decision made over the summer where, and I had no idea this was going to happen, and I was directed um, that supplies that any parents purchased would need to stay in the home, okay? So I was not able to, um, you know, revise that in any way because we, had a, we didn't know that was going to happen. Some schools they set theirs up a little bit later, so they were able to respond to that directive. So basically, you, your child will have two sets of supplies. The supplies, if you order them in advance, or that supply list that you got in the mail, just keep those supplies at home. We at the school are purchasing the supplies that they would need in their classroom, and your child will have his or, or her own supplies. They will not have community supplies. That is one of the questions. So they will have their own pencils, crayons, glue stick, what have you, whatever they need 
they're going to have um, in terms of supplies in the classroom. Um, so no community supplies. Just give me one second. So I answered this, like someone said, you know, why was there not a consideration to modify the supply list? Like that happened after we had already created the list. Like we didn't, we didn't anticipate that. We tr we've tried to anticipate a lot of things. That's not one of them. Um, so if you didn't get the supplies yet for your child, it's okay. What, what your child is basically, go every child is going to need pencils, crayons or color pencils if they're a little bit older, um, you know, a basic glue stick, chopped scissors, uh, you know, like a, a notebook, like a marble notebook. Those are like basic things that your child would utilize in at home. And we will get everything else your child needs in school, okay? And on the list each year, the teachers have, pre-COVID, have always asked for things like um, disinfectant wipes. So if, you did get that in your supplies, you know, you, you can keep them at home. If you would like to send them to the school for the teacher to have, you can certainly do that as well. But it is not a requirement for you to go searching high and low for Lysol wipes, okay? Because um, the classrooms have been deep cleaned. They've been sprayed with that electrostatic sprayer. So that film is, is going to be coating everything your child will have plenty of time to wash their hands. And we also have a hand sanitizer dispenser in every classroom. So you don't need to worry about that, okay? So please, um, some of us just need it in our homes these days, just keep it in your house. If you have a whole bunch and you just wanna send one bottle to the school, that's fine, you can do that. But please don't feel like you have to run out and get that, okay? So in terms of supplies, we will take care of school supplies, please make sure you have basic supplies in your home. And if you feel like you want more detailed information about that, just email your child's teacher. They will be sure to tell you what they would like you to have at home for your child whenever they're learning on their remote day. Okay, so I think I, think I handled related to that. Okay, I answered this question. I answered, I will get back to this question. Okay, so I made some reference to platforms. So um, there was a question that came uh, forward about like, why did we choose certain platforms? Okay, so I wanna address that. Our kindergarten and first grade teachers are using the platform called Seesaw and our in second through fifth will be using the platform called Schoology. Um, so I had a question, why are some schools doing Seesaw K to three? or K to four and um, really part of it is like a remnant of what occurred in the springtime. So in our school in the springtime, our entire school used Schoology with the exception of kindergarten. They used Seesaw. So our first grade teachers felt that it was very appropriate for them to now take on Seesaw because the children and the parents were already familiar with Seesaw and so then the teachers invested in their professional development this summer learning the new platform. Our second grade teachers uh, took that same philosophy where they already knew Schoology and the first graders were coming in already using Schoology. So they felt that it made sense to stick with Schoology for this school year. So at this juncture, you know, like the question is, am I going to revisit that? Am I going to change that? And um, we're not going to change that right now. Um, there's some very specific feedback that we have received about um, the use of Schoology with younger children. And, you know, so one of those things was um, the Seesaw platform allows children to uh, respond right into the platform. And our Second grade teachers are aware of ways that children can respond in the platform as well. So they will not be asking you to take photographs of work and emailing it. Everything will be within the platform or using something where they can record their response or use their actual math workbooks or what have you. Because kids are going to be coming back and forth, they will have access to their materials. Okay, so that is the answer to the question about why are we using this platform 
Um, and uh, so a suggestion came forward that if there are any videos that are going to be YouTube to be used through the safe YouTube site, and I will certainly bring that back to our teams to make sure that uh, use that, that particular YouTube. Okay, um, I answered this question. Okay, so I want to uh, just shift a little bit and talk about going, this goes back to, um, it is about like health and safety. So um, there were a number of questions that were about use of masks. Okay, so you know that um, everyone is required to wear the mask. All of the adults and all of the children, we all have to wear our masks um, and we know it's hard. You know, I, I know I've tried to have a conversation with the mask. It is, it is difficult. It is not easy. So it will certainly be a challenge for our teachers to do their direct teaching and still be able to get that deep breath and project their voice. It's, it's going to be hard, but we have to, you know, do what we need to do to keep each other safe if we're going to be in the classroom environment. Will children have breaks from their mask? Absolutely. Um, we, the grown-ups, need a break from the mask, too. So what will happen is, um, you know, there will be a time where you will get to meet with your teacher, um, and they will tell you, like, when, how they're going to build in mask breaks. But I can tell you that I've met with the teachers um, about a week or so ago, and we talked about, you know, the frequency of when we would have those mask breaks and what that might look like. So you know, there's going to be opportunities for the kiddos to step outside of their classroom, like not the whole grade at once because we don't want to fill up a hallway, right? But if one teacher steps out into the hall and we have 10 kiddos in the hallway spread out, they can take their mask off and take a deep breath. Um, even better, what we're going to do as long as the weather holds up, we will have the children step outside and get some fresh air and take their mask off and breathe in that, that fresh air is what we really want. Um, because we know how hard it's going to be cooped up at their desk and also having their masks on. Um, I, this question has already been addressed multiple times by Dr. Ricca in terms of children who have a special circumstance that they can't wear their mask for some medical reason. Certainly, if that is the case, you know, please present the documentation and, and we will proceed from there. But our expectation is that everyone wears their masks and um, all of the seating in the classroom is socially distant. So, you know, the classroom looks very much like when I was a kid in school. <laughs> we're, we're spread out, we're in rows, and, you know, it's, it's not ideal, but, um, you know, we're, we're excited and happy to actually see our children's faces in person if we can. Okay, so I think I've addressed everything related to mask, masks, mass breaks and what they look like. We want them to physically take them off. We want them to go outside and get fresh air or at least step into the hallway um, when they take their break, okay? Um, and you know, like some children will wanna wear like the face shield. They can wear the face shield too, that's fine. Um, Whatever is going to make you feel like for your child to be safe, we want to encourage that. I also want to talk about hand washing. So we're going to have a hand washing protocol. Um, even though we have the hand, the san hand sanitizer dispensers in the classroom, my preference is that our children are washing their hands with soap and water and warm water frequently here at school. So they will wash their hands upon arrival. So as soon as they get to their classroom, they will wash their hands and then report to, you know, report to their station, with their, their desk, <laughs> um, their seat. Um, when they're leaving to go to a special, they will wash their hands. Upon return, they will wash their hands. Using the la after using the lavatory, they will wash their hands. Certainly after um, playing and eating, wash their hands. So our, our kiddos in kindergarten in particular, they, um, we do have, I do wanna share with you that we have a change in our lunch and recess program this year due to COVID. So our kindergartners will play first and then they'll report to their classrooms and they will eat in their classrooms. The rest of the school will be eating first. They used to always play first. We had to reverse it this year. Otherwise they would be eating too late in the day. So they're going to eat first, then they will go outside and play. Okay, I'll talk about what that looks like in a moment. 
our children in grades one to five will eat in the cafeteria, okay? They will be socially distant. And what that's going to look like is one grade at a time in the cafeteria, which is why this is gonna take so long. We usually have two grades at a time. And um, there will be three students per long table. So they will be spread out far from each other. Um, and they'll have a little marker so they know where they need to sit at the table, okay? So we can only fit about 54 to 56 children, I think, in our cafeteria. Um, and that's just about half of any particular grade anyway. So we're able to have them eat in the cafeteria as a result, okay? Um, children will be able to bring their lunch to school. They, they can also purchase lunch in school like they did before. The difference is that the food will be prepackaged. There'll be a cold option and a warm option, okay? Um, in terms of playing outside, which we want our kiddos to be able to do, the children will um, stay with their cohort. So their class is what I mean when I say that. And they will have a specific area that they're able to go and play and be monitored by a teaching assistant. And we will rotate those different locations. So as you can imagine, we have the front playground, the lower playground, we have our blacktop and we have our fields, right? So um, we will rotate the children through through those different locations so that they can have uh, some semblance of recess, some kind of fun. Okay, um, I think I answered, I answered masks. There were like five questions about masks. I uh, answered instrumental. I talked about supplies. Okay, that's actually almost it for questions. Yes. I think I answered all of the questions that were sent to me. Um, so now I just want to share um, something that was brought up that Nurse Maggie said, and that was about the communication, which is so essential. It is really, really important that you go into K-12 alerts and make sure that your information is current. So, you know, I sent um, a little reminder about tonight's meeting, and at minimum, I got 45 kick back, uh, messages kicked back that were not received by uh, 45 families in our school because their information is not up to date or it could be that it was entered incorrectly it could be that the email was put in wrong by one letter you know that will throw it off and it's undeliverable so it's really really important that you go into k-12 alerts and make sure that your all of your contact information is current okay um, if you have not joined um, your particular child's grade level remind that is connected to me. I, I wanna encourage you to please do that if you haven't done so already. Um, and once you join, that's your group until your child graduates from or moves up onto the middle school from Post Road, okay? So I, I have that by grade level. So sometimes I'm just, sometimes I just wanna send out a note to first grade or I just wanna send a note to kindergarten. I'm able to do that, or I can send it to everyone. Your child's teacher will also have a way that they want to communicate with you, okay? And, and maybe a lot of the time it's gonna be right through the platform, but they may also have an account just for your class for the Remind app, okay? So please, you must connect to every, every way. Um, please join our Facebook page for Through the PTA, please, follow us on Twitter, um, through the PTA or through Post Road School. Um, there's so many different ways that we try to get the information out. Um, so please do that if you have not done so. It's actually in your packet. So this, the packet that you received has a page there that tells you exactly how to sign up for the Remind app. And in terms of open house will be virtual. So You'll have, an, you know, you'll have a chance to connect with your child's teacher and you'll be able to ask much more specific things related to instruction or the schedule and things of that nature, okay? So in terms of the questions that I received, this is, I think I covered everything. So now we can, I'll spend the last 10 minutes um, looking through the chat to see if there are questions here. Um, 
that were not answered, okay? Oh boy. <laughs> Osorio, I just want to share something that Nurse Maggie has shared behind the scenes. Okay. There was a question regarding if students may only wear a face shield, and the answer is no. A face mask must be worn, and you can also wear the shield. Right. And the reason being that the droplets um, with a mask, there's greater protection from, for others as opposed to a shield. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, this is a good question. So this is related to pickup. Okay. So I didn't talk about like arrival and, and pickup. So this year, um, we're changing things a little bit. We're going to have specifically assigned doors for certain grades. So if you're walking to the school, there's certain doors you enter. If you are driving to the school, it's still the same where you drop off in the back of the school in the staff lot. So you'll drive up to the door that is for your child's grade level and they'll be released to go inside. The children in grades two through five will get out off the bus or walking or by car, we'll go straight to their classrooms. Our doors are opening at 8.30 now instead of earlier um, because we just don't have the staffing to open up the school earlier. Um, so we're really sorry about that inconvenience, but the doors will open at 8.30 and children will report directly to their classroom. Kindergartners and first graders will report to the gym. So our gym is already divided in half. Our kindergartners will go in through a specific kindergarten door, which is right across from the play structure, the gym doors. And our first graders will go in through the tile doors. And they'll be on the far side of the gym and their teachers will be there to meet them and escort them upstairs, okay? So that's what's happening with arrival. So pickup is gonna be different this year. So hopefully um, parents will be excited about this because we, <laughs> We are not parking our cars and going to get the children. Now you're going to be able to drive through to pick up your child in the staff lot, okay? So we're still working out the actual system, but the concept is that, you know, cars will pull into the staff parking lot. There'll be two rows, and the order in which you are lined up in the lot is the way in which we're going to call the children out to load into the vehicles, okay? So that's the concept. Um, you'll have some kind of system, whether your name is on, the, on your windshield or a number that'll identify your child inside and get them out to your car, okay? So I, I hope that made sense. Um, it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge because what we cannot do is block Soundview Avenue, okay? So Soundview is like a major thoroughfare. So once we fill up the lot, the cars that don't fit inside of the lot will have to wait on, on Soundview on the other side of Prospect where the stop sign is and all those big homes, those beautiful homes are. We'll be waiting there closest to the homes, not blocking people's driveways. It's a big ask. <laughs> But if we get this system to work, then it's, you know, we could quite possibly be able to continue that um, format moving forward, you know, for years to come, but we all have to adhere to, you know, the system that we create, okay? So um, car pickup, we're gonna have a car pickup now, and then those families who, who live nearby, who typically walk, they would report to the blacktop and their children will be waiting inside the cafeteria and we'll call them out. In the same uh, way they're lined up outside, we'll call the children out and release them to go home. Okay, so that's what um, the afternoon will be like. So it's, it's gonna take time and you know, the kids are gonna start coming out in a staggered way, but they're not going to be released to your car until you know, we have everybody like if you have a multifamily, right? Like we have kids in three different grades, we have to wait for all of your kids to get to the location and put them in the car in order for you to pull away. So it's gonna take a little bit of time, but we wanna highly encourage it. It works really well at the other schools um, and we're sure we can get it to work at our school as well. It's just gonna take a little bit of time for us to work out those kinks as I mentioned in um, my letter this summer, okay? 
Um, there's a question here about devices being loaned out. Yes, we plan to be one-to-one -one eventually. What will happen is that at the, um, we, we are going to prioritize and give iPads to those families who have nothing, who have no device at home. They will get devices first, and as the rest of our inventory comes in, we'll make sure that every family has an iPad, okay? Was how the conditions that were part 100% fully addressed? Uh, this question here is like, like oh, sorry, the story was frozen for the moment. Oh, I'm oh. Sorry. sorry, I didn't realize I was frozen. <laughs> okay. Was Ms. Clare, I just want to go back. There had been a question about the um, dismissal plan from some of the in the chat. So a number and a name will be assigned to each family. So if you have children in various grades, you won't have to report to different doors if you are driving to pick up your child. Right. We'll gather the children for you and then load them in. And then I, I did you hear the part where I responded about the technology? Or was I frozen? You, you responded and then I followed up while you were frozen and then you came back in. So I heard it yeah. echo. Said, like, was the con was, what was the conditions that would prompt 100% back to school address? We didn't discuss that. Not until the governor says, or the CDC says, we don't have to socially distance. It's just, we're not, we can't come back full. Yeah. So we're focusing our efforts on hybrid and fully remote right now until we have a different directive from you know, CDC and Department of Health and the governor. Will parents be allowed to visit the classroom? No, at this juncture, parents are not allowed to enter the building unless you have a specific um, need or a meeting that you have to have. And if it cannot, for some reason, we are going to do it virtually unless we can't for some reason. So at this time, no one can enter the building except for employees and the children themselves. In terms of after school programs, uh, I, I'm assuming that you're talking about after care programs. We do not have an after care program in our school. We used to have the Youth Bureau program that is not happening at this time. So parents who are in need of a program would have to seek a child care program outside of the school, such as, you know, maybe the YMCA, YWCA. Um, Salvation Army, those are some of the programs that exist outside of our school. Will students have, so things like snack time, those, those things you, the teacher's going to tell you. If they have a very late lunch, they'll tell you if there's a morning snack and vice versa, okay? Birthdays, well, you know, we're not even there yet with birthdays. <laughs> we're just trying to get the kids to come to school. <laughs> so we will, Oh, certainly we can honor your child's, you know, birthday, you know, you know, and, and, and I, I think this is really an opportunity for us to um, celebrate them differently than we have in the past. Like, so we're not bringing in food. Like, we don't know who's touched all of that from other homes. Like, no offense, but we can do it differently. Maybe you want to send in a story book that you, you know, something, something different. Um, we will certainly be open to some unique way of celebrating your child's birthday because it is special we want we want them to feel good and feel and and be happy um hand washing is safer right yes um so we want to use the hand sanitizer as a last resort but it will be available for what like maybe we have to rush out to dismissal everybody grab some hand sanitizer you know maybe like that but we want to do the hand um, so this question came up like parents are asking like what do i do i'm a working parent so you know, this is a challenge and certainly um, we're, we're dealing with a lot of challenge all around and we're certainly empathetic and sensitive to this. Um, um, but it is a school day. And so who, whoever's watching your, your child um, may have to, I, I know something we're going to be doing and working with the teachers is making sure like whoever your, your babysitter is, or maybe it's a family member that they also have a copy of the schedule and the links and the instructions that are needed for them to go into a certain platform. So that'll be really important to share that information with whomever is taking care of your child at home so that they do have um, as best of a quality experience as possible. Okay, but we're certainly sensitive to that, but um, 
you know, our, our teachers too, like they, they're, they're, uh, they are, um, some of them <laughs> don't have childcare themselves and they're trying to figure this out too, right? So we're all gonna work together and we're gonna support each other through this difficult time. Um, so you should start receiving news from your teachers probably, you know, later this week or next week, if they're going to send you a, a, a specific message. Um, here's a very long one. Hold on. Hmm. Yeah. So outside of the school, this question keeps coming up. So outside of the school day, um, I don't know that they're like a teacher is going to always be available to do something beyond the work hours. So they may, um, you know, especially in the beginning, troubleshoot and try to help. Um, but your, your child has to participate within the work, within the school day as much as possible. Okay. There was certainly a question about like, um, you know, if my child was involved in an extended day program last year, we, we just don't have that. Right now, we don't have an extended day program. Uh, the offerings are going to be what we offer during the school day at this juncture. If that changes, of course, we use assessment to select children who may need some additional help. We will have our reading, our remedial reading program. So children who qualified for reading services um, based on assessment, we will, we will still have that service. That happens during the school day. It's not beyond the school day, okay? Um, I don't know, Ms. Lasser, if you're scrolling through and you see something that I haven't answered. Inside their home, how will they be bringing it to? We'll talk about that. So in terms of like home, there was a question like, will there be homework? Yes, there will be homework. Um, and homework is always developed. We try to make sure that it's developmentally appropriate. So if there are kindergarten parents here, you should not be expecting homework for a while. <laughs> we just want your child to get used to coming to school. And then later on, we'll bring in um, homework. And, and really, we want that to be, uh, we really want your child just, and this goes for everyone, reading um, for, for a little chunk of time. And maybe they'll have uh, a, a little bit of math to do. But it shouldn't be anything that's too cumbersome. If you're having some kind of difficulty with homework, then certainly reach out to the teacher so that we can make adjustments. This is a topic where parents uh, have different opinions. Like some parents love homework. I want more homework. Homework, homework, homework. That's very important to them. And then there are other parents who want nothing to do with it. And then there's some people right in the middle. So, you know, we're, we're, we believe in having something, and I think you should work with your child's teacher to make sure that we're meeting you, your child's needs and that it doesn't become a source of frustration. That's the most important thing. We do not need you to send cleaning supplies to school. That's a good question. Um, so this question about VRE and enrichment, um, those programs still continue so the children you know we we haven't not that it's not happening but most of our focus has not been on that we've been mostly focused on the general instructional program um and the coordinator for enrichment has been working with the enrichment teachers i need an opportunity to connect now and find out like has anything changed but as far as i know i don't i don't think that anything has changed but um if it does change, well, certainly we will be communicating that with all of you, okay? Um, children will go to their specials. So there's a question here, like, will they go to art? Will they go to music? Will they go to PE? They will go to the locations. Um, so in music, there will be, there's no furniture in that room, but they will be very spaced out. It's in, it, they usually sit on the floor and they stand periodically. So they'll be very, very spread out. Um, and same thing with PE. Uh, we'll get them outside as often as possible, for sure. If we can get them outside, we'll take them outside. Um, and then art, as long as we can physically distance them far apart from each other, they will go to the art room um, and they will have set supplies. Um, if there's any change, the worst thing that will happen is that the teacher will push into their classroom, okay? Um, I answered this question. 
Thank you for thanking us. We thank you for your support. It's very nice of, of you. And you know what? I have to just share on behalf of Ms. Lasser and myself. We feel very supported by all of you. Um, there have been so many emails we've received just thanking us or, you know, just taking an opportunity to um, just show your support. Like, we, we, you know how hard it is on our end, but we also know how hard it is for you. And we're, we're in this together, guys. And we're really hoping that we can get back to, you know, kids in school every day. We would love that. So, oh, this is, I did not address this. I do want to address this before we part ways tonight. And that is this question about the hybrid model, two days in and uh, the three days home. So if your child comes Monday, Tuesday, and uh, if they come into school Monday and Tuesday, Thursday and Friday are their virtual day. Everyone on Wednesday, unless they are in a special class or have an IEP, right? Those kids will come into school, but everyone else will have a full virtual day of learning on Wednesday. I want to clarify that. Um, that was a question here from Mr. Best. They will have a, vir a full virtual day, but what I want you to know about that full virtual day is that the morning time only in that day is synchronous. So anything that the teacher would do where they have to have a live experience, that will happen in the morning time. And then in the afternoon, there will be some assignments posted. They'll still have a full day of school. The afternoon will be um, asynchronous or some posting of work, okay? And they'll still, they'll still have to do that on Wednesdays, I think. Ms. Lasser, did I get, did I cover everything? I feel like. Yes, I was answering some questions uh, in the chats privately. Okay, good. There's a question here just about, you know, the, the, the temperature check. So parents, you have to do a health check every morning with your kiddo or all your kiddos. <laughs> some of you have money. So you have to, you have to do that every morning and um you're going to receive a k-12 alert this is what i was this is why it's so important for you to make sure your information is correct you will get a reminder each morning that says to do your health check and you have to respond that you've done the health check and that you're attesting that your child is well and you know does is not showing any symptoms okay um our staff will have to do the same i have to do it as well we all have to report in every morning and then kids who are not, whose, whose parents don't do it, then we have to, we have to hurry up and, and gather those children and do, uh, the nurse has to check them. So we don't want your child to miss learning. It's really important that we're all working together to communicate and share the information, okay? Um, we are working, as a good question, will you be able to meet your child? Will, will we meet the teacher before? Like, kind of thing we're working on something because we're full remote the first two weeks i'll know a little bit better next week when i meet with the teachers we're trying to work on creating um some kind of experience where you know you can meet the teacher even if it's socially distant outside we're doing like a meet and greet for our kindergartners which we would normally do anyway but um if we can we will um but if not, it would certainly be at open house. You would get to meet the teacher, which is typical. We usually don't have a meet and greet for grades one to five. Kids go to school and you meet the teacher at open house. If we can do it sooner, we will. But um, certainly count at open house to, to see the teacher. Um, right. So this question is like, oh, my child goes to school Mondays and Tuesdays. When does that begin? It begins when um, when when it is announced that children can come to school in person, right? So right now we're fully remote until the 21st. It could be that on the 21st, we are starting in-person hybrid model. So then that's a Monday, your child will report on Monday, but it could be that we're starting on the 24th or the 25th, then those Thursday, Friday kids would start first, right? So whatever the date is that the district puts out that we are beginning the hybrid model, that is when your child will report to school in person, okay? All right. I think we answered all of the questions. 
I, okay, so now I just want to look at you and just um, get ready to close out. We have a 7 p.m. meeting. I'm going to attempt to do all of this in Spanish. <laughs> it's going to be a long night. Um, but uh, I'm glad to see so many of you. I want to thank you for just trusting us, for getting on here tonight and, and, ans and asking these tough questions. Um, you know, just we're here. Um, we're here to support you. We're here to help. Um, and we want more than anything for all of our kids to, to come to school. But in the meantime, um, if they cannot, we are going to do our very best to provide the best virtual experience that we can. Um, okay, so in the meantime, if there's anything that we did not answer, please just shoot me an email. It's at the very top of the chat. My email address is there. It's also on the Post Road uh, webpage. And I'm more than happy to answer in an email or I can even have a phone conversation. I've, I've spoken to lots of parents by phone as well. Okay, so um, we're committed and we're ready and we're excited for a new school year. Um, let's all just continue to work together to keep Post Road School safe so that we can do our best teaching and learning. Okay, so, so good to see all of you. Thank you for all of your support. Have a good night. Good evening.